Hello viewers to newszimbabwe.com where today in the studio is Rosemary Siachitema, the Consumer Council of Zimbabwe Executive Director. Uh, my apologies, we're supposed to, to be hosting Mr. Denford Mtashu, who happens to be the Confederation of Zimbabwe Retailers President, but he has just uh, sent uh, an, an apology that he has been held up somewhere and he may be joining us uh, later on. Uh, on the business day this afternoon, we want to tackle issues concerning the rampant abuse of consumer rights in the country and the uh, I have with me uh, Miss Rosemary. Welcome, uh, Miss Rosemary. Thank you very much. Yeah, yes, uh, maybe just to, to begin with, uh, what is your, your perception of what is currently obtaining in the market concerning matters affecting consumers? That's very broad uh, to be, uh, I think it would take us talk about it okay. uh, because I think maybe sometimes um, when people mention consumers they will rush to talk about the prices but um, consumer issues are more broader than that they go beyond prices and um, maybe if we are addressing the issue here in Zimbabwe at the moment I think it's important that we um, premise it on the economic environment that is prevailing in Zimbabwe and for a long time now um, where we talk about fundamentals that have not been stable for a long time and well if economic fundamentals are not stable it will touch on a lot of issues that relate to consumers and um, I think uh, what we have uh, noticed is that when economic fundamentals it means consumer issues are not right either. So you can take the whole gamut of uh, consumer issues and they have not been right uh, for a while now. Oh, okay, would, would you mind just sharing uh, with us the, the major highlights of these fundamentals? Okay, I will pick on the very, um, the one that is so blatant for all people and prices of basic commodities and maybe many others i will mention basic because that's what we look at as consumer council and then you look at i think again that is a very major one in that uh, those who are providing our services react to what is happening in the economy with the cost of um, uh, services on internet or the cost of rentals at the cost of fuel well um, and it also then goes into other uh, that do not relate to price but it's mostly aesthetic value how consumers are handled uh, you find that um, most times uh, the consumer being or the customer being king or queen that also fundamentally changes in an economy that is not working too well because you find that um, industry changes the way they behave as well there isn't much money that goes towards um, services to do with looking after the consumer um, it seems they mostly are interested in the bottom the bottom line and when you start looking quickly at the bottom line you find that you will not look after your customer well so it's that whole range i mean we can mention sector by sector you look at the health services you look at uh, uh, services to do with city councils you look at education if you look at the past year you find that there have been so many changes because of um, institutions reacting to an economy that has issues Okay, just uh, maybe talk, referring back to this issue of uh, fundamentals. Uh, our interaction with the players in the business sector points to the fact that uh, Zimbabwe has been in a prolonged currency crisis. And as a result, this is also causing instability, which they say they have no choice except to pass down mm -hmm. to the last man on the ground who happens to be the, the customer. So what I want to understand is that in your lobbying, uh, don't you fight like right to the to the root causes are, are you not also in, in engaging in, in, in such 
in, in him. We are in all the fights. But um, you see, these things have got a hierarchy. We are an only advocacy body in Zimbabwe where consumers are concerned, the only organization. And um, it is a big fight that we have to fight. Um, if you are talking about currency issues, um, whatever issue we find out that is impacting on consumers, we actually direct it to whatever ministry is responsible. And uh, I think um, being so few as we are, you find that we have tried to go into all those places. We reach as far as uh, the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, uh, Minister of Finance, Minister of Industry, Minister of Health, the city councils themselves, the service providers, whether they are internet-based or whatever, we try to get in there and um, see how best consumers can be handled. Now, what has been happening in the past two years or so is that, or maybe in the past year, you find just a whole uh, raising up of funds, uh, you know, costs in everything, practically everything. And um, the reaction, I think, by government has been that uh, this is the situation Zimbabwe has found itself in. I mean, if um, policy-wise it is accepted that fuel goes up from $1 odd to $3, no matter how much you advocate when that happens, it becomes an inevitable thing that prices will go up because um, no one is doing business for charity. They are all doing business to get a profit. So if you are going to um, change the cost of fuel that is used for bringing goods into Zimbabwe, because most goods are coming from outside, that cost has to go somewhere. And it ends up in the consumer, you know, because it builds up the price of the final commodity that goes onto the shelf. Okay. So where do you advocate besides advocating to government to say, deal with the fundamentals, you know, that is where we are. If you remember when we came uh, from the hyperinflationary period, going into 2009 when there were multi-currency systems, we, our voice was there saying that um, we have to also look at how our prices are built up. But no one took that bold step because we can do it, we can point out to it, but no one really uh, changed how prices, price build up, uh, changing from hyperinflationary to multi currents. No one changed anything. It seemed like prices just moved and people settled on a price that they put. And we still indicated at that time that we felt prices in 2009 were about 30% more than what they should. But um, no one took up the courage to say it was mentioned at different fora that um, we should have, but it remained we should have up until now and then other things have taken, um, uh, have taken over uh, all the changes that we've seen. Okay, but coming to the situation that is obtaining right now, what is, what is your, your, your take on the, our current pricing structures, you know, with regards to the hiking of fuel prices in January, the monetary policy, the RTGS dollar, Oh, oh, since you're on the side of the consumers, you're representing more on the side of the consumer. What, what do you think about this? Did you think we are just fair? Do you think it's in the right direction? You can't talk about fairness at all there. Uh, you have to, you know, prices are a, a result at the end, isn't it? In a, uh, if you look at ourselves and we are not really producing anything much, we are bringing everything else from outside. Um, all the money uh, that we generate here will go towards uh, bringing imports. We've talked about production, production, production. How much are our manufacturers uh, producing? 
we can but demand manufacturers to produce more than the uh, 35, um, uh, what do they call it, the percentage of goods that are coming from our own manufacturers. It's, a, it's about 35. It hasn't shifted much. It shifted, I think, around 2009. I think people were a bit optimistic. A new currency, you know, were using the, uh, the, 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 the US dollar and all the... I think there was some optimism in them. But I think around... Um, towards the 2010, we actually said prices were going up then. Okay. But then it depends on whether people take action. The action has to be taken at policy level. Um, if you are a lone voice uh, that is saying this is happening and then all the other voices are still um, riding on the euphoria uh, only to start talking your language around uh, 2013, 14, 15, what do you expect? Okay, so okay, in a way, what kind of action would you expect? from the citizens, even from the policy makers, what kind of direction should everyone then embark on to? If we are to saying um, our answer is to produce, we always talk, you put the radio, television, news, we talk about Zimbabwe being the breadbasket, but we have not gotten there. We talk about uh, climate change affecting um, the countries everywhere and ourselves. But we still not complain, but put forward an issue that we don't, you know, we have climate change, uh, there was no rain, but we have not put our efforts enough to irrigation. We know there are so many bodies of water around around the country, but they're not being utilized. I would be talking about ourselves as the breadbasket. Let us see ourselves putting in the required 99% or whatever action into making that true. And it can only be made true if we have enough irrigation, if we have enough funding that goes into agriculture, because that is what will kickstart our manufacturing. But at the moment, there are too many big gaps in between. We have the gap of what we are producing. We have the gap in manufacturing themselves who don't have the up-to-date um, uh, plant and machinery. And the, call, the, the result of that is that by the time it gets to the product, the unit cost is high. Let's see. Let's do the work here, and it's not Consumer Council that okay. will do that yeah, work. But, but uh, recently, mm. I think you have seen the government coming up with a raft of policy proposals, mm. the transitional stabilization oh, no, no. program, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. on. Don't you think that uh, we no, are no. now on, on the path to recovery? That is the next step. Yes, there are some signs of uh, us doing the right thing. Uh, but we, we need to do more. Okay. It's not enough. We need to do more. We need to do more. Like when people say production, product, we need more, 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 more. We need so much more. We don't want to be caught with our pants down with the climate. We don't want, you know, um, let, let's see it. I don't see it. Let's see um, what's this big dam that has just been, uh, that we've been, is it country dam? Or oh, which one? Not a lot of uh, harnessing the water from uh, the Zambezi. Let us see, let us see it happening. It is happening, but not fast enough. Okay. Yes, it okay. has to be faster than what than, we are than, doing. Than, than, than yes, see. let us produce the center pivot so that everybody is irrigating. Mm -hmm. they are, when it does not rain, let those irrigation uh, pipes work so that uh, we bridge the gap in between. Let us mm -hmm. produce, let us, let us make it all true. And then um, I think the other challenge that comes in for service providers, we had gotten to a point where the cost of us going to the internet was uh, quite commendable. And then it has all gone up. You read in the newspaper, um, they're talking about increasing those prices. As this is talking about increasing prices, everybody is talking about increasing prices. But then people don't um, recognize what that means on the ground. Uh, it means that we are taking ourselves back to 
so much before where uh, we, you know, we were not competitive in our pricing of the services that we have. Oh, okay, then just a question from one of our followers here, raising concern that he, we have not been seeing consumer council on the ground. There are a lot of abuses taking place, a lot of short changing in the market. And, uh, what would be your response to, to, to that? Oh, we hear it all the time. Okay. I, I would counter that person to say, um, are you a member of the Consumer Council? You see, um, I, I talked about how small this organization is okay. and its reach to the rest of the country and uh, the resources that are put into how small, how, how, it is, how small it is very it is we it is very small okay. if we are going to talk about a national reach mm. it's very small it is only but a private voluntary organization okay, okay, okay. but its strength has been that uh, we have pushed and up to the point now that we're talking about the first protection bill okay. which will unlock a lot more, um, we hope, um, organizations within Zimbabwe that are advocacy bodies for consumer issues. It will unlock, um, you know, um, being able to um, operate on a level playing field with producers and manufacturers and actually uh, criminalizing some of the bad business practices that are there in Zimbabwe and have been operating without check for a long time. And that's why people would then talk about toothless bulldog and everything because we didn't have a law that backs up any action that we do. Now the Consumer Protection Bill, if you look at it, which uh, we've been talking about it as a game changer, is going to look at all those things market against consumers. Maybe we, the law can now come in and actually correct those things and we have a bite uh, where there was no bite before. Okay, so uh, oh, 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 hopefully by what time do you think that this would have been yes. just your prediction? Let me considering okay. that it has had the first reading. Uh, it depends on um, what happens in Parliament. Um, we are hoping by the middle of the year that there should be a law. We have seen that there is enthusiasm because um, uh, I think in the last month um, we backstopped the uh, Parliamentary Portfolio Committee uh, that was doing consultation uh, around the country. Mm -hmm. We travelled with them so that we could um, uh, give technical backstopping because uh, we live and breathe what is in that document. So we were there to see um, you know, that we uh, help them to explain uh, what all these sections are all about. And there's a lot of enthusiasm for people who've been waiting for this for a long time. Um, the first time that we took round the first draft was more than four years. So it really has been something that people have been waiting for. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, then uh, this uh, viewer, okay, when we, uh, this viewer goes on to, to ask that, look, Yes, we are quite small, we understand the of resources and so on, but what is the little that you have done which can give us hope that with the coming in of the consumer bill, it will not be just like any other? Well, the thing is that it's not for consumer council. Okay. It says it's a national law. Okay. And it's going to on structures there's going to be a hopefully a commission that will run it so it's not ours it's the nation's law just like any other law so people might should not mistake that uh, uh, the law is a consumer council law it is a national law and um, there's going to be structures that will oversee that law so there's going to be hopefully a commission there are going to be structures for uh, handling complaints and uh, there are going to be consumer courts that will run that thing so uh, people should not look at us and think that we are going to be running the law we have been instrumental in ensuring that zimbabwe has the law in place now with the law coming in uh, one thing that is going to um be pushing for is to ensure that there are more consumer advocacy bodies. If you look at other countries, it's not only one. 
There are advocacy bodies looking at issues to do with internet, others to do with uh, service provision in the uh, town, in the homes and things like that. So it was quite an anomaly uh, for us to only have one organization and expecting that they're the ones who are going to do all those consumer issues. What about in the health sector? What about in internet? What about in uh, uh, food standards, quality? There is just a whole lot of issues that have to be looked at. So it was an anomaly that there was only one organization dealing with these issues. We become jack of all trades and skilled at none of it. We need people who have got more information about standards and quality for consumers. Uh, we need people who've got more information about uh, the cost of internet and uh, protection within the internet. And it cannot be done by one organization. So the law is quite fundamental in uh, uh, bringing a more wholesomeness in how we deal with consumer, okay. consumer issues. So, okay, it just uh, to, be, to, to, to get clarity on this one. Considering that uh, you are operating as a welfare organization, yes. how effective has been the consultation, the consultation process uh, to, to, to this bill? Well, have, have you also been impacting on your own activities as independent as you are? We are just riding on parliament. Oh, no, no, no. I think uh, this was just one of the activities that we thought um, if we didn't ride on, um, you know, um, its impact wouldn't be as good. Why we were right on it is that we also ensured that uh, consumers who've been participating in all the activities that we have um, do come to these um, um, consultations because it's important for them to um, see where the bill is, what new additions, whether um, it will, it has taken on all the issues that they brought up when we, when we did the first consultation. And besides that, we have a whole big program of consumer education that we do. Uh, we are not sitting on our laurels and twiddling our thumbs just waiting for the, uh, for the, for the bill to come into place. We have uh, a whole big problem, uh, program on consumer education. You find that we've interacted with the Ministry of Education to get uh, consumer education in schools when they, uh, I think at um, primary level in their textbook there's a whole section on consumer protection. So uh, we want to catch them young. Adults are a little bit more difficult for them to take on the issues of consumerism. So we want our generations that come behind us um, are not at the same level that uh, we are at, but uh, learn about consumer issues for, from young age because it's not just another issue. It is part and, and parcel of living. That is what consumer issues are all about. Okay, there have been reports that uh, you are supposed to get part of your funding from government through the industry ministry. Yes. And this has not been coming through, it's not fixed, it comes here and there. Yeah, I, I, I think you... the information, uh, the way you are telling it, it's also, you know, mishmash and uh, you, there is never a, a, a set amount. Okay. We submit a budget uh, that is considered and um, under consideration, like any other parties themselves put forward a budget, and it, it depends on uh, what the votes are there from the um, Minister of Finance, depending on how much money Zimbabwe has. And uh, we also get our portion. We don't get the full uh, funding for everything. They support um, uh, general operations, uh, the support salaries, and we have to look for our own funding for our projects. So we, like maybe other NGOs, write project proposals out there to seek for funding. But you find that uh, internationally, um, or even maybe in Zimbabwe, there are more other things that have been considered priority to do with education and health. And, and because of, I think, people's lack of understanding of the importance of consumer issues, it's always way down the line of um, how important people think it. But I think over the years, people now are starting to understand that um, consumer issues are important because they touch even on health and education. If you don't understand your consumer rights, you're not going to really understand your rights in in health or in education 
or in other areas as well. Oh, okay, so do you receive complaints? Do you handle oh, them? Yes. How many do you we receive do. in a month? Oh gosh. In a year on average? Just, just, just Very average. difficult to average it, but we do receive complaints. Um, I think we most uh, get our complaints for people who have been following uh, the issues to do with consumers. Um, most people who don't understand consumer issues will grumble at home and they will throw something into the bin. But those who have really started to understand consumer issues will know that um, if um, their rights have been violated, they can actually approach offices that are there dotted around the country okay. and uh, most times we get um, complaints on electrical gadgets and mostly because people are buying from the smaller shops and uh, uh, some of the products have been deemed to be substandard or don't have good quality and um, they buy stuff from the market use it one day and it's not working the other day you know because uh, people don't understand the issues to do with guarantees and warranties and expectation of um, how long a product should work when they buy it okay yeah but uh, you see as we round up uh, our program uh, do you think that uh, it, it is easy to protect consumer rights in a, in a, in a, in a situation where we are experiencing currency instability, you know, political turmoil, everything that is associated with our country. It's not easy, but it does not mean that we should not uh, have uh, a way of protecting our consumers. Um, we are not always, hopefully, going to stay in this crisis mode, but even in crisis mode, that does not give. Um, business or service providers an excuse it's it's not an excuse for you to treat consumers badly you still have a an obligation to protect consumers you still have an obligation uh, to give proper quality products you still have an obligation to observe those rights so whether we are in crisis or not um we still give a uh, consumer education and information and it's not um it's not a small job. I don't. Uh, people should not think that, um, you know, getting people to the level of them understanding their rights is a small thing. It is a very gigantic thing. And even if I were maybe to ask some of you here, you don't know what your rights are. But we we think we are so learned and we are in a, a particular job. You okay. might just find a mbuya from our club in Cholocho knowing their rights than are here. Uh, because when things are right and when you've got the money to afford yourself so many, I think that you don't need to know your rights until one day you come across it and you start looking for that help that you need. Okay, uh, viewers, uh, that was our guest, uh, Miss Rosemary Sia Chitema, the Executive Director of Consumer Council of Zimbabwe, who was just uh, highlighting on issues concerning the rampant abuses on the consumer rights in the, the country. Unfortunately, Mr. Denford Mtashu failed to pitch up as he had uh, uh, promised earlier on, but otherwise, thank you following our program from other stories you can visit our website www.newszimbabwe.com handle newszimbabwe.com thank you so much for tuning in